and, and the next piece is reimbursement. Uh, I was at the eye doctor the other day, and I, one test, they, they wanted to go in and take a photograph of my eye, but it wasn't reimbursed. They said, do you want to pay $35? It could help down the road. I thought, okay, out of pocket, I'll pay $35. Well, why isn't that reimbursed? Down the road, that could save someone a lot of money, but we don't have the data yet, so it's going to take time. So one thing we need to do is I would give a lot of the money back to continue it to the lobbying effort so that we can get on the Hill and let CMS know that they need to start thinking about wellness and, and, uh, and preventive care. But then the other piece is post-operation. We need systems that will help us watch people. My dad had an operation, went home, called him up. I, he didn't answer the phone. I, I don't have any idea how he is, but how he was. But if any of you saw Dr. Topol yesterday, he was wearing that Corventus patch that not only did ECG, heart rate, respiratory, but motion. So imagine if I, maybe it's a consumer system. Maybe I get together with my family and we pay $500 so that he takes his system home for a month and I can go online to a web-based service and see that his heart rate looks fine and he's sleeping. Great, that's all I need. Is that worth $500 peace of mind? Probably. And that might be how this has to happen before you get CMS and the others to realize that these systems are efficacious. We all know it. Right? We all sense it, but it's a matter of breaking through those business models. So the first, sensor companies, low-cost sensors, the companies are building smart systems, and then lots of lobbying. Uh, before I start, um, you might notice I'm not wearing one of these gizmos, so I am not held liable for any lies or half-truths <laughs> in the course of this discussion. So uh, that said, I think uh, the question needs to be further clarified. Whose billion are we talking about, right? Uh, not mine. If it's the government's billion, I mean, the government spend, is spending $40 billion just to get doctors incentivized to use electronic health records, which have been around for years now, right? If it's providers' money, clearly there's a lot they can do. Someone's been talking about it. Um, but let me answer from the perspective of a pure consumer electronics company that's trying to make a business in this emerging area, right? And the answer is not obvious at all. In fact, at this point, both from the perspective of this point in time as well as the different geographies, uh, the emerging markets as distinguished from the United States, uh, there are just significant hurdles to justifying a billion dollar investment. Um, again, I have to clarify that this is from the perspective of Sharp, where, so we look at uh, consumer uh, solutions for the consumer, where you know, the reimbursement is clear, the return on investment is within reasonable timelines, um, we're looking at mass markets, you know, the kinds of things that a, any consumer electronics company that's out there uh, on the floor today would be interested in uh, before investing a billion dollars uh, in an in a emerging business. The, the challenges, though, are uh, not insurmountable, but they're different. They have to be recognized as such. The challenges in the United States, um, you know, well-known, the regulatory problems, the, uh, we've twisted ourselves into, I think, an intractable pretzel with this with this whole relentless debate of who should be paying for something that I think is pretty obvious, um, the, the benefits of which are pretty obvious. Um, and besides that, there's another very uh, an underlying insidious problem here. It is that the, the healthcare dollar has been really stretched to the extreme in the United States. That's a real, real challenge. Uh, you know, where are we going to get uh, so if Sharp invests a billion dollars and wants to make back three, five billion dollars in five, six years, where is that money going to come from? Um, in the emerging markets, the problems are, are different. Um, there, I think, uh, for example, you look at India and China, there is a significant pull from the, from the local population. They have serious environmental problems. Um, diabetes is on the rise as uh, people get wealthy. Uh, also, the... Um, the health dollar, because a lot of it is out of pocket there, um, people are in a position uh, to spend much more than they are here. Uh, also, the regula regulatory barriers there seem fungible for both good reasons and bad. So uh, depending on how you look at it, uh, that might not be as much of a problem as in the United States. But both from uh, the perspective of time and looking at it globally, uh, I would not recommend Sharp invest a billion dollars in this technology today, in any kind of technologies. But that's going to change, I think, in three to five years. Okay. In the essence of time, though, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and open it up to the, to the floor here. I'll skip my second question. I'd like to have some questions from the floor. Yes, right down here. Yes. Wow. 
along with that is however a, an educational process and that is a process that may spend over the next 10 years, 15 years to educate uh, the patient and the people who are not yet have diabetes to take care of themselves and take responsibility. I think that's a very important part. If you take responsibility in your doing, then you are more willing also to pay for it. Okay? I think this is a longer process, and I'm not sitting here and having the the, the, the the silver bullet to tell you how to do it. But to answer your question, I believe that that either we have a real socialized socialized system of healthcare and are willing to pay higher taxes and ever increasing higher taxes to feed that system, or we have to change that. That's my opinion. I mean, that is from a worldwide perspective in Roche. We see other countries where that's happening. I think we see it developing as a consumer product. I think we've spoken about this, and I think that's what's going to happen. People just don't have the tools. I think that's the biggest problem, and the feedback. So we'll see it begin as consumers, and then slowly we'll get the data, and some of the parties will wake up and go, wow, I can actually save money. I can, I can reduce hospital stays if I administer this, 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 these pieces of equipment. So we'll start with the consumer, I think. And I think that you know, from a continuum perspective, I think that's the point that we would like to talk about, or we reinforces that. You know, by creating a certification and creating a standardized mechanism for which all this information can flow, uh, your systems become much more uh, cost effective and we can drive those consumer costs down uh, considerably. So, you know, it's, it is sort of a dual approach in that particular sense of, you know, we're certainly trying to get to the clinical side, but we're, by using the systems themselves, creating the standards, driving those costs down to a lower cost uh, for the consumer himself. Yes, question here. <laughs> oh, <no>. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Making progress. <laughs> Making progress. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll work on that. Question. <laughs> 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 okay. Great. Great. Very good. But I, that is, I mean, that's ultimately what we're looking at here. It's these lower cost platforms. You know, 